for environments that have decided to use Windows Azure-based services uh, to support their development environment, one of the things that you might want to look at is installing and integrating the SDK or the Software Development Kit into your Visual Studio environment. So let's have a look, see how we can do that. So I've got Visual Studio up and running here, and this was the first launch of the product, so it's in its complete default state right now. Uh, and you see that we do have a link right there for Windows Azure, and that, in fact, is where you can go and get the software development kit. We'll see that in a second, but let's just have a look at its sort of default state here, if you will. For example, if I click on the Tools menu, you can see that I've got options to connect to a database, to a server, SharePoint connection, and so on. Uh, but there's nothing here that has anything to do with Windows Azure. Similarly, if I go over to my server explorer, there is a link for Windows Azure here, but you see it's only got these three options of mobile services, databases, and websites. So what we're going to do is just sort of take note of that and compare what happens after we install the SDK. So let's just go back to our main window here. And we'll go ahead and click on our Windows Azure link. And this will take us straight to the Azure site. And in fact, you see that there's the option right there to install the SDK. There's a few other options here on the site. Tutorials and resources for compute data services and app services. All of the Azure-based services. Uh, some best practices, samples, and so on. But we just want to install the software development kit. So we'll just click on our link here. And we're going to install that with Visual Studio 2013. And this is just going to bring up an installation utility. And this will take a few minutes to install. So we're just going to let this run and check back when that finishes. So the web installer has come up here. So we're just going to hit our install option. And we're just going to choose the options here. Basically, you can see what's there and we can pick and choose a couple of different options here but we just want to accept this and we do actually have to have Visual Studio closed when you want to run that install so we have to go back and close that accept this and again our download and installation proceeds here this does take about uh, five or so, five or ten minutes so again we'll just let that run and check back when that completes Okay, so our initial installation has completed here. Uh, so we can just click on our continue option. And that's just going to uh, bring us to our web page here for Windows Azure for .NET. We can just dismiss that and close out of here entirely. And you see that we've got our finish option here where this has all been installed. So we can just finish that. And once that completes, then you also have the option to put in these additional uh, features if necessary or if desired. Uh, you got a couple of options under Spotlight here, just things that are currently available, highlighted if you will. But if we look at products, there are tons of add-ins that we can put in there as well, depending obviously on what you require. But you see under All here, we've got all kinds of additional features that can be added if necessary and you can also break it down by category if you prefer uh, but you see that there are just tons of additional features that can be put in there we can also go to applications and you see that there's all kinds of options that are already set there as well so tons of add-ins tons of additional features based on whatever you need but we can just exit out of here for those and we can go back now and relaunch our Visual Studio. And what we'll find now with the SDK installed, we'll go and look at those same two options that we did earlier. And if I check on my tools menu here, now you see that we've got an option to connect to Windows Azure. So we can actually click on that and that allows us to sign into our subscription where we can again access whatever features that we've included within our subscription. And also if we go to our server explorer, and look at our same option here for Windows Azure. We discover that there are a lot more options with respect to what's available now that the SDK is installed. So cloud services, service bus, SQL databases, storage, virtual machines, websites, all these additional features available now uh, that we've installed the SDK. So 
Once you launch your Visual Studio, again, just go into your Windows Azure, download the SDK, you get all those avail available add-ins and new features, and once they are installed, you've got a lot more control, and what uh, kind of applications can be developed uh, become a lot easier with respect to what you have available through your Windows Azure subscription.